Today, you've come merely to make a presence, obviously, Phil. Is it a political presence or is it an agricultural presence today? No, it will be more agricultural presence, you know, I really don't. And it's quite complicated not to politicise the agricultural portfolio. And um, it's after the election any time. And as I said, it's, it's my yearly annual visit and it's really my 10th time. Uh, so you can check on it every year, come around and just keep on abreast of the technology to see what's going on. And I really think it's a mistake that more cabinet ministers doesn't visit more than they don't visit this well, to see commercial farming in action because this is commercial farming, not the things that they talk about. Yeah, you cannot take decisions on that level, mm. on rumours, on myths, on propaganda. It must be taken on uh, on facts. Mm. And that was one of my big frustrations in the beginning that we talk about these myths. And I said, well, that's a myth. Can you prove that? You know, mm. land ownership or how farmers treat their farm workers. Do you have any examples on technology, on mechanisation? And all these issues you can see here in practice here. Have you had an influence on the agricultural sector as a deputy minister? I really think so. I think it was the right decision. It was a very difficult decision. But if you check before 2009, uh, food security was not all that priority from government. They never spoke about it. Even the question, you know, we've got the advisory council at the moment under the deputy president on food security. The whole question of commercial farmers and the contribution they make uh, was never mentioned. Mr. Patel the other day admitted 95% of our food uh, is being produced by the commercial farmers. That statistic he gets for me in the internal debates that we had on farming, etc. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I think maybe we sensitized them. And uh, the, the big argument is they want stability, they want still to govern. Mm -hmm. And they, you can't bargain with farmers because they're 37,000 commercial farmers. That's not one seat. You need 45,000 today. That's Loftus full of people. But you can bargain with food security because if people get hungry, then they're in trouble. And I like to use the example in cabinet to tell them, watch what happened in Mozambique. When the bread price went up, suddenly people running in the streets. Mm. Don't let it happen here. Who can avoid that? Commercial farmers, so they important. Let's look after them. I agree, Peter, but that, I think the point I was trying to make there was, have you had been able to make have any influence on, on the government? I know you're the Deputy Minister, mm. but a lot of people think that the Minister does what she wants and, and you've been sidelined somewhat. Would you agree with that or not? Yes, on some issues surely they sidelined me uh, and, and specific very political ideological issues. But 80% of the things in agriculture, as my experience, is not that political. And surely there you can kick open doors, you can write to a, a, a civil service and, and say, please, do something, and help individual people. It's a, it's a question I have to ask, Peter, and I know you're going to forgive me because you understand I do have to ask this question. Will you be there as Deputy Minister in, in, in the reshuffle cabinet that's coming? Because I think it's pretty obvious, obvious yeah. now, Minister's moving on. Yeah. Nobody knows. Technically, it's the President's prerogative. He makes a decision. How do you feel about it? I've got, got the, I've got the mixed feeling about that. Mm. On the one side, you've got a lot of idealism that you can really make a difference to be there. Mm. On the other side, there's a lot of frustrations at the end of the day. Mm. I think it's good for South Africa, it's good for agriculture, but not necessarily for my party. And that's a sort of responsibility that you must weigh up against each other. You know, sitting around that table at, at the, for example, the Bosparat, Cabinet Bosparat, there's 60 other ministers. Then I come into the debate and I say, you know, gentlemen, there's no votes for the Freedom Front Plus around this table. And then they laugh a bit. There's no media around this table. So when I say this, I'm talking from my heart. What you now plan is not going to work. And these are the unforeseen consequences. You think you're going to help your voters? This, this, this. And then there's a debate. Whether they agree or not, there's a debate. And surely being there is better than sitting in opposition and shout at them after the decision being already taken in cabinet. Yeah. Well, I sincerely hope you keep the balance going because the farming community needs it at the moment. I think we're entering, and I don't know whether you agree with me here, Peter, we've gone through a phase. Everybody expected land grabbing and a Zimbabwe situation. That has not occurred. You and I both know that we need those commercial farmers that are producing to stay producing. We can't sure. afford it in the food chain to lose them. So we're entering another stage now. How do we accommodate the new era black aspirant farmer? Yes. Well, I'm on record more than once that we need more black successful commercial farmers, without any doubt. How do we do I, that? I had a discussion with Mr. Nkwinti the other day, mm. and he said, maybe jokingly, he said, you are creating problems for me with my farmers. I said, what do you mean? He said, no, we had a delegation of black commercial farmers complaining about his land proposals because they don't like it. They said, and the same guys that the other delegation said, these minimum wages are killing them in the end of the day. Now it becomes a class struggle, not a racial struggle anymore. It's your, your reason. I think it's just common sense.
Those guys are experiencing the common sense of having your own land, farming on it, and not all these ideological things that have been said. And maybe that was a good contribution. Should <coughs> agriculture, DAF for instance, be broken up now and not work as agricultural, forest and fisheries? Should there be three separate entities? Well, the impression I get is that the president wants to, uh, to get, uh, have less ministers. Yes. So that complicates the issue. I've got a problem with fisheries. I'm not really sure. The food part was the argument why they put it at agriculture. But it is a very artificial marriage in the sense that a lot of that is environmental issues. Uh, in the end of the day, you must focus on food production and make it easier for farmers to food. That's your job. Don't interfere. Don't interfere on every farm because that's a problem. And you talk about myths. One of my experiences is, and I talked to the president about that, a lot of these things I said, you confuse the farmers. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. And the president's reaction was, yes, but you must distinguish between policy and open debate within the ANC. And I said, but it's very difficult for a farmer, even for me. What is open debate? This new land proposal, is it open debate? Is it po 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 policy? And then you get your Afrikaans farmers don't trust anything anymore. And they look at all these sort of conspiracy theories because they're not sure what's going to happen. And they start believing in, in myths as well. Final question for you, Peter. How, how do you get on with President Zuma? He's a likeable guy. He's a likeable guy. He is, isn't he? He's a yeah. likeable guy. What you see is what you get. Yeah. He's not complicated, yeah. what you see is what you get. Yeah. But uh, I don't think he's a statesman with a big vision. Yeah. He's a good politician, sort of uh, managing this complicated party. And that's my problem, that uh, the real answer, he'll manage this right through, but the real answers and looking at vision, and what we now need is someone to change direction. A lot of these things don't work. Economic policy is not working, agriculture is not working, we need someone who's willing to say, let's do this, although it's unpopular, I'll go against the majority. And I'm not convinced that he can do that.